wearing a gray blazer and glasses. Your Honor, I'd ask the record reflect to identify the defendant. The record shall so reflect. All right, Ms. Rogers, I want to ask, how did you come to know Mr. Terry? Um, we met on a dating app back in, I think it was May of 2015. And somewhere after you met on a dating app in 2015, did you all start a relationship? Yes, we did. Did that relationship continue through March of 2017? Yes, it did. By the time we get to March of 2017, are you and Mr. Terry in what we would call a boyfriend-girlfriend kind of relationship? Yes, we were. And were you living together? Yes, we were. There is a home at 626 Worthington Drive in Lansing, Michigan. Is that the home where you resided? Yes, that's correct. And did you reside there with Mr. Terry? Yes, I did. I want to specifically ask you about Friday, March 17th, 2017. Was that a holiday? Yes, it was St. Patrick's Day. And for St. Patrick's Day, did you and Mr. Terry have any plans set together as a couple? Yes, we did. What were the plans? The plans were to meet up with um, a few of his friends and go out to celebrate St. Patrick's Day by drinking. All right, so your plan was to go out during the day and go have some beers, hang out with friends, things like that? Yes, but not to stay out too late. That day, did you end up going through with the plan and going out with Mr. Terry? Yes. And what time of day do you think you went out and uh, started hanging out and drinking? So we started around lunchtime. It was around noon, 1230. Um, and we met at a place called Clada's Irish Pub, and we had lunch and drinks there. And did you all stay out the remainder of the day celebrating, drinking, hanging out with friends? Uh, the majority of the day, not the whole day. When did the day start to wrap up for you? Um, I believe it was around 6 o'clock. It was just starting to get dark. And I want to ask you, during the day, are you drinking? Yes. What are you drinking? Um, it was different at each place. Um, at Clada's, where we started, I believe we each had a beer, and then we split a beer there um, along with lunch. And then we moved to another bar called Tavern and Tap, and we had you know, another beer and I think shots there as well. Um, and then moving to another place later on where I only had water. Okay. So you kind of talked about it, but Mr. Terry is drinking throughout all of this? That's correct. Both beer and liquor? Yes, from what I remember. And so somewhere when the day is starting to wrap up for you, somewhere around 6 o'clock, did you have a chance to see Mr. Terry? Before I left, yes. And can you describe his condition at that time in terms of how sober or not sober he may have been? Uh, when I found him, it was in an adjacent bar that was completely empty. Um, so I, I went in there and he couldn't even speak English. He was slurring his words so bad he, he was just talking nonsense um, and was stumbling all over himself at that point. All right. And did you tell him you wanted to go home at that point? Well, I did, yes. But I left without him because I was, I was upset at his condition. Okay. And so you end up leaving the bar and going home on your own. Is that somewhere around six o'clock-ish? That's correct. So at some point, do you see Mr. Terry again later that evening? Yes, I do. In between that time, have you been drinking? Not in between that time, no. And what time do you think it is roughly when you see Mr. Terry? Um, it was dark by that point. Uh, I would say nine o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Okay, so it's been a couple hours at least. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Um, when he comes, I guess you see him back at the house, correct? Correct. Describe how he comes home and what happens when he comes home. Tell me what he's like at that point. So um, he didn't come to the front door. He came to the back door, which was right off of the kitchen, um, the sliding door. And he, he knocked at that door, and I proceeded to let him in. Um, at that time, he was very clearly drunk. Um, he couldn't walk straight. Um, he seemed just very... Um, you know, it's hard to describe, but just you could kind of sense his energy as being very frustrated or angry or upset, um, just in general, just right. the general sense. So as the kids say, you got a vibe off of him that he seemed angry? Correct. Did you do anything in that moment? I did not. I went and I sat back down on the couch where I was when he showed up. And what does he do? Uh, so he went into the kitchen and I believe he was making a sandwich. He was making some kind of food at the counter. and. Um, the kitchen and the living room area is pretty open, so as I was sitting on the couch, I could I could see him. Um, and just to help the jury picture that, if you're sitting in your living room, can you see into your kitchen? Yes, it's it's an open <coughs> layout. 
It's like an open concept kind of thing. Yeah, we just the counter dividing the living room and the kitchen. Right, so you can see him in the kitchen and he can see you in the living room and tell us what happens next. Um, so I remember sitting on the couch watching TV and then, you know, the next thing I remember is standing behind the couch and I'm, I'm looking at him in the kitchen and I remember him coming around the counter and coming at me. Right, um, and before that, before we get to the part where he comes at you, do you remember if you guys are having any sort of argument, if anything's being said, either he's saying something, you're saying something, whatever the case may be? I don't recall any of that, no. So you remember now all of a sudden there's a moment he's coming at you, and I want you to describe that as best as you can. Do you mean he's just leisurely walking in your direction? No, he was um, coming at me very quickly and aggressively to the point where I kind of backed off and, and braced myself, and I actually verbally said, you know, what are you doing? You know, oh my God, what are you doing? And when you said the words to him, what are you doing? What, if anything, did he do? Um, he proceeded to knock me into the, the front door that was behind me. Um, and at that point, then we both fell to the floor. All right. Do you mean he makes physical contact with you somehow? Correct. How does he physically contact Just with you? his body, like just taking his whole body and pushing it into me. And at that point, do you say anything to him? Um, I don't think I said anything at that point, no. All right. So what happens next? Um, so then we're on the floor and he's just trying to keep me on the floor and he keeps punching me um, wherever he can find access to punch me. So whether it be the face, the chest, the back, wherever. Um, and he is a, was a wrestler and the best way I can describe what he was doing is trying to keep me in wrestling moves and keep me on the floor so that I couldn't escape. When you say he's a wrestler, you mean like in the WWE or you mean like a high school coach? A high school coach. Um, or a coach, maybe it was not high school, I, but he was a wrestling coach. Um, and I can't remember if he wrestled himself, but. Um. So you guys are now on the floor near the front door and there's a, a fight happening on the floor. At any point, do you say something to him to try and defuse the situation? Um, yes, so as, as the struggle continues and I'm trying to break free, there was a point um, when I yelled at him, I said, you know, I love you, why are you doing this? And he, he said, um, no, you don't. Fuck you. I'm going to kill you. All right. And do you remember those words specifically? No, you don't. Fuck you. I'm going to kill you. I will never forget them. Yes, I remember. So tell us what happens next in the, in the fight. Um, he just continues to, for lack of a better phrase, beat the shit out of me. Um, and I keep trying to escape. There is a point where I'm able to stand up, and he continues to punch me in the face. Um, at one point, he gets me onto the floor, and... Are you still in the same place by the door, or has the fight moved? No, it's mo it moved through the living room, and then um, where I landed on the floor was, you know, I landed face first um, with my upper body, like on the kitchen tile, and then my lower half was on the carpet of the living room. Um, and at that point, there was, there was blood everywhere. Um, where is the blood coming from? I, I believe my nose at that time, he had broken my nose. Um, but I remember trying to push myself up and he was on me. And every time I tried to push myself up, I couldn't grip on the floor because there was so much blood. And um, he would purposely put his weight on me and push me back down, so I, I was unable to get up. And through all of this, are you fighting, resisting, trying to stop him? Yes. So what comes next? Um, so I remember laying there and I was laying on my left side and I remember seeing the, the trash can there. There was a black trash can. And at this point, he was taking both of his hands and he was taking my head and he was slamming it into the floor. And um, so every time he would do that, my vision would go black. And I thought he was going to knock me out or I would be unconscious or something at some point. At some point, does there ever come a moment in the fight where there's sort of a break in the action? Yeah, so, so after that, there was a time that he got up off of me for a short time and I was able to sort of sit up on the floor and I, I remember just kind of having my head down and just, I was thinking like, holy shit, did that, you know, is this really happening? And I was really disoriented and dizzy and I was, you know, I was hearing all the shuffling in the kitchen. Um, and then the next thing you know, um, Mr. Terry comes around behind me and stabs me in the neck. When you say he stabs you in the neck, do you know what he stabs you with in the neck? I didn't see it, but it was a knife. All right. And when you heard the shuffling in the kitchen, do you keep knives in the kitchen? Yes. 
So looking back now, when you hear the shuffling noise in the kitchen, <coughs> is it the sound of someone rummaging in the kitchen yes. looking for something potentially? Sorry, yes. All right, so now you are still seated on the floor, and I want you to describe your position and his position at the moment when you feel something plunged into your neck. So again, I'm, I'm sitting on the floor, and I'm kind of just, again, disoriented, just kind of sitting you know, with my hand and my, my head in my hand. And then he comes around behind me, and he wraps his arm around my neck, and he stabs me in the throat with a knife. So he's stabbing you from the back? Yes. Wrapping around your describe. Yes. At that moment, are you armed? No. Are you even standing up to put up a fight? No. So now he stabs you in the neck with something, which you assume is a knife. What happened? <laughs> so at that point, uh, again, it was just kind of the thought, like, holy shit, he just stabbed me with a knife. Like, I need, I need to get the hell out of this house or I'm going to die in here. And um, so I remember standing up, and as I stood up, he continued to, you know, try and stop me and try and punch me. I was able to get loose for enough time to be able to turn around and directly behind me there was the garage door. Um, so I was able to get the garage door open and run to the garage. All right, now you're in Lansing, so I'm guessing homes might be laid out a little different, but is there access from inside your home to the garage? Yes, there's a garage door that goes into the garage. All right, well we have those here in Florida too, so that's not so different. Uh, but at this time of the year in March, is it snowing in Michigan? There was um, a light blanket of snow on the ground at this time, yes. All right. So you now make for the door to the garage, and as you step into the garage through the door, is there a garage opener? Yes, so I pushed the opener with my left hand as I, as I was running out um, to try and get the garage door to open so I could escape that way. And did the garage door start to open? It did, um, and I ran towards it, but it was very slow, um, so I couldn't quite get under it right away before he was able to get to me again. All right, so now you're waiting for the garage door open enough and he attacks you again? Yes. Describe how he's attacking you again. Um, he, he was just trying to stop me from leaving and um, we both fell to the ground at that point and somehow had rolled out of you know the garage that was open um, down the driveway. So now you've spilled out onto the driveway like out in public? Correct. And what's happening there? Um, so we were rolling down the driveway a bit, and I ended up in a position where I was I was under him, and he was on top of me. Um, he had he had used both of his hands to take my head and slam it into the cement multiple times. Um, sorry. Um, so he had he had the knife, and he had stabbed me three times in the right shoulder. All right. So he's still armed with this knife, even though you fled out of the home, and he's chased you. Yes, and this, this entire time I'm, I'm screaming for someone to come help me. At any um, point do you realize that some sort of like neighbor or person nearby has responded to your calls for help? Yeah, as I was screaming, um, I could very faintly hear voices across the street um, saying, you know, get off of her and, and just hear them talking. Um, a lot of it I couldn't make out what they said. All right, and so we're at a point where Mr. Terry and you are in the driveway, you're still fighting, he's still armed with a knife. Tell me what else he's doing and what you're doing in response. So again, I'm, I'm screaming this entire time, you know, that he's going to kill me and somebody please help me. Um, but he had, he had stabbed me those three times in the shoulder and he went to bring the knife down again and I had reached up and I, I grabbed with my right hand the, the blade under the knife um, in midair and don't ask me how I did it. Um, <laughs> I just grabbed um, and I took the knife and I, I pulled it. Again, I'm on my back and I, I pulled it across my face and I just remember thinking he was going to like stab my eye out or something as I'm doing this. but. I was able to pull the, I'm sorry, pull the knife enough over that it fell out of his hand and it fell to my left side. Um, and then I kind of rolled over it and tucked it underneath me so that he didn't have access to it anymore. And so once you've kind of tucked the knife under your body, rolled onto it, does he stop fighting with you or does he still no. keep trying to get the knife? No, he was still slamming my head to the floor um, and because, and he would, he would reach down with his hand and he would try and like fish for the knife real quick, um, but then I would try to get up and then he would hold me back down again. And then, you know, kind of just back and forth, like trying to fish for the knife and I'd get up and he'd try to fish for the knife. And then he pushed me back down. And there was a point um, when he had gotten really pissed off because I was, I was kind of, you know, holding the knife with my arm as it's tucked under me. And he reached down and he bit me um, on the forearm here to try and get the knife loose um, from my grasp. Is that the only place he bit you? No, um, 
Shortly after that, after he fished a couple more times for the knife and couldn't get it, he reached down and um, he bit me twice on the side of the, my left cheek to try and get me to let go. And throughout all of this, are you screaming and yelling for help, asking him to stop, putting up resistance? Yes. So does this eventually, does the fight sort of end at some point? Um, yeah, so we didn't live that far from the hospital and stuff. And, and as the neighbors were, you know, I later found out they were on the phone with 911 at the time. We could hear sirens coming. You, you could hear them coming from around the corner, not too far away. And when we both heard the sirens, that's when he got up off of me and ran back in the house. And what did you do? Um, I got up and I grabbed the knife so he couldn't get it back again. And I couldn't see very clearly because my contacts were in, but they were all like covered in blood. Um, but I, I ran across the street to the voices of the neighbors who were telling me to come over there, you know, come here. Um, and then I, I proceeded to go across the street and I collapsed on my back in their front yard. And where was the knife when you went across the street? Uh, I'm not sure where it landed, but I remember when I fell down, I threw it so that if he came back, he wouldn't find it. So you carried it with you away from the driveway to wherever it is you ended up in the yard of the neighbors? Correct. At some point, did law enforcement come and respond and emergency medical people respond and end up taking you to the hospital? They did. Your Honor, if I can approach the witness. I want to show you, ma'am, what's been marked as state's, state's 